Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Fire and Stone by Pegasus Steel. Fire, Fire and Stone, excuse me, is a game in which you are going to be exploring and flipping over tiles, hoping to create different sets of things for yourself, hoping to have the most points after you have explored most of the uh, map. This is uh, one that is going to have you uh, dealing with a, a bit, uh, quite a bit of luck in this game. Let us show you how it works down below and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here's Fire and Stone from Pegasus Spiel on the table. Let me show you guys how this tile uh, flipping over set collection game works in which you are going to be moving about the ancient world here, and you're going to be trying to figure out what are on the underside of all of these different tiles. And like I said, it is a set collection game as you are trying to uh, help your cave people the best you possibly can in this game. Uh, it's not a very complicated game. I know it might look intimidating seeing everything out on the board. There's a whole ton of pieces, but this is a fairly simple, straightforward game. Let me explain to you how it works. You're going to have a uh, tribesman, tribes person here that starts the game on this particular spot. And you're going to have two others, one that you will put on the score tracker at the top here, and then another that you will unlock throughout the course of the game. What you are going to be doing on your turn you can move one of your characters again at the beginning you only have one but you will unlock another uh, you can move them one or two spaces and they have to be adjacent spaces you can see the lines here these dotted lines are uh, accessible to you after you have the invention of shipbuilding uh, we'll come back to that here in just a second. So you move one or two spaces, and wherever you end your turn, you may end up being able to take an action. So for instance, I might move into this region here. If there is an un a, a tile that is face down, your action can be to flip it over. And so I'll flip this tile over, and it happens to be a forest. Now, whenever you have a forest tile come up, you are going to look at this bottom part of the board here, and you're going to see several stacks of animal tiles. And so I would grab the furthest left stack of animal tiles. There's always going to be three in this stack, and I would place it here on top of this forest tile. And then I would get to look at all three of these and choose one to keep for myself. So I look at these tiles here, and you're going to see food and then bags of food or a combination of the two. So this is the icon for food. I would get to be able to make this into four food at some point, or I could get two bags of food or one of each. Now how food works in this game, you have spots here to put bags and for each spot that there's a bag, you are able to put a food. That's why you see that the uh, hexagon shape here, or octagon, uh, uh, yeah, octagon shape here around this particular bag. And so uh, I would have two spots here to be able to put food. If I wanted more than two food, I would have to get bags to be able to slot in on my board here, like so. And uh, then I could be able to put a, uh, a a piece of food here on this spot. But before I can even do e any of that, uh, I would pick one of these three to keep, and let's just say that I keep the one of each, and I put it face down on this spot here on my board, and I put the other tiles, animal tiles, back on this forest for someone to take later on on another turn. Once all the tiles are taken, then uh, the forest tile remains and the forest is dried up. There are no more uh, animals to hunt in that particular forest. Uh, if uh, I went to here instead and flip this tile over, I have found fire. Now, when you discover fire in the game, you get a victory point. So I would move one step on the victory track here. And what fire is good for, whenever you discover fire, you are able to take all of the tiles that you have discovered and hunted throughout the course of the game. You would get to make them, prepare them, and that's when you gain the benefits. Now, you want to do this in a smart order because if you create food but you have no bags to put that food, then you just lose the food. So you want to be smart about how you do this, making sure you have enough bags for the food that you are creating. If uh, I would have moved here 
Then I would flip this tile over and I have discovered an apple. Now, there is gathering in this game and in a four player game, you would have two columns here. You'll always have two columns regardless of how many players. But in a four player game, you start with two types already on the two columns you have. In this case, I have nuts and I have carrots and veggies of some type. And so I would need to complete these columns of nuts and carrots, or I could uh, get rid of one of them to start a new column of apples. I cannot have two of different types on there. Uh, if uh, I've placed my second one, so let's say I have two apples here. If I place my second one, anytime I see this icon and I cover it up, I'm either getting an invention or a point tile. So you have a small market of invention cards over here. There's going to be three throughout the course of the game. And you can see, I already mentioned the ship building. You can see Waddle and Dob allows you to pay less food to build your huts. We'll come back to that here in a second. And the plant knowledge gives me a third gathering store for my plants. So that's a good thing. Uh, I could take one of these inventions and you can have as many inventions as you want throughout the course of the game. You can never have more than one of the same type. Or I could take the top card of this victory point uh, stack of cards. And so this card right here would give me four points. Now, in order to have one of these, though, I have to have an invention first. So I might take this shipbuilding invention and I would just set it next to my player board area here. And so long as I have this, I have this ability throughout the course of the game. But if on another turn, I take one of these cards, I have to place this on top of the ability section of one of my invention cards. And now I can no longer use this invention, but I do get four points at the end of the game and uh, this st stack of cards gets uh, smaller and smaller in point value throughout the course of the game going from four to one and a new invention would come out and it just happens to be another ship building uh, so that is what the gathering will do for you if I were to come here there's another example of uh, gathering, and so I would put that in my gathering. If I come here, I have found a hut. Now, whenever you find a hut, you are able to build one of your 20 huts for free, and uh, these are worth points at the end of the game. You're going to get one for every one that you're able to put out on the board. I would then take the hut tile, and I would place it on this track up here, and once I have put so many on here, uh, three in this case, then the second region of the board is unlocked. You cannot go to the second region until you unlock it right there. Once five hut tiles have come out, then that's when you unlock your second uh, worker. And then when you get all the way to this point, the third region is, un is unlocked to you. When you get all the way to the end of this track, that is going to signify the end of the game. Another spot that you might find or another tile you might find in this game is one that looks like this and you just simply gain those resources as soon as you discover this tile. Now you might end up moving to a spot that has no tile, in which case you would just get one food. You might be asking, well, what is the food good for? What, yeah, I'm gathering it, but what's the purpose of that? Well you are going to want to build settlements. And how you build settlements, excuse me, is wherever there is already a hut, you can build more huts. Now you have to pay food to do this and the cost to do so is one per settlement that is already on that spot once you've placed it. So in this case, it would cost one food to build another settlement and I might do so. To build another one would be two food and so on and so forth. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want to have majority in the settlements. I want to have more of my huts than any of the other players because for each settlement, whoever has the majority gets one victory point at the end of the game. That's very important. Now, there's one other type of tile that you'll discover, and it's found only in Region 2, and it happens to be the cave. Now, the cave is special because once you discover the cave, you're going to flip over the card here. Now, I have all the cards here, uh, but you will only have one in the game. Uh, you'll get rid of the rest of them. I'm just showing you that there are a ton of cards here for the cave. And uh, it might look something like this. If it has a blue icon up here in the top, that's the easier types of caves to do. The person who discovers the cave is going to receive this benefit, in, in this case, one food. And then 
they will be able to do the ability that's listed here, which in this case is, is that you may pay three food to buy an invention card as an action here on the cave. And then once you do so, you put your marking stone here to signify that you have taken this action and you are not able to do it again. The uh, marking stone here is this little uh, guy right here. And this card would remain revealed for all the players to see. And then when they come to the cave, they could be able to take the action. Another example here is takeover. And you can see this is the red icon. It is a little more difficult to do. The person who discovers it immediately gets a victory point. And this one would allow you to place one of your opponent's huts in a settlement that you have uh, a presence in for five food. You get to replace their hut with one of your own. Again, it's a one-time ability. That's pretty much the gist of the game. At the end of the game, you are going to get points for all the huts that you have out on the board. You're going to get points for the cards that you've collected throughout the course of the game. You are also going to get points for your settlements and the points that you've earned throughout the course of the game for discovering fire. You also will have a secret task dealt to you at the beginning of the game that has to do with where on the board you are getting your majorities. Because if I have majorities on port areas, I would get one for each or maybe one for each next to a forest or next to a lake or in region one, or next to a mountain, you can see that there are gonna be mountains on the board. So that's going to uh, be a secret objective that only you know about throughout the course of the game. Whoever has the most points is going to be the winner, and that is how you play Fire and Stone. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. All right, we're back, and now we're gonna share our thoughts on Fire and Stone while you all check out some gameplay footage of a game between Sam and I. So Sam, first impressions, seeing this out on the table, what'd you think of it? It, it seems like a lot. There's, I mean, you have a map, um, lots of tiles, lots of little miniatures. Um, it's a little overwhelming, and I wasn't really sure what to expect from this game. Okay, lots of meeples, not not miniatures, yes, but yes, yes yeah. sorry. Um, yes, I, and when I see this out on the mat on the board, the first thing I think is is that this Yay. is going to be. <laughs> Well, I, it does. It looks appealing to me as a gamer. Um, it looks as like a civilization, um, yeah. like uh, just like one of those heavy Euro civilization yes. type games. It looks games. like a gamer game. It absolutely does. And, I, and that may be the artwork. It might just be that it's a big global map. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it definitely doesn't feel like it has a lightweight non-gamer feel to it. So you getting into this and trying to wrap your head around it, what was that like knowing that it looks like this? Um, it did take me a little bit longer than I typically like to kind of get into a game. And so I think there's a warning there for non-gamers. It's not a difficult game. Right. But it just, the feel of it takes a second, figuring out what you're doing each time. Um, so I think you just need to have some patience with non-gamers yeah. to because there is is a, a little bit more going on than a typical what I would suggest non-gamer game. Yeah, so I would the way I'd kind of would describe this is is that it looks like it's going to be a 4 on BGG weight. And if you're not familiar with what I mean by that, um, BGG weights the games between 0 and 5, 5, five being the most complex plex a game can possibly be. It looks like this would be on the higher end of that yeah and it's not it no. is a it is a fairly light game it's not the lightest game ever i would say that it's about a, a, a high two and a half yeah maybe two mid two somewhere in there um now you can make it more complex by adding in some modules but as the base game goes it's a fairly light simple game and it might leave you asking the question was that it like it, yeah. it feels like it might have should have been more um you you just you're exploring the map, moving your meeples around, flipping over tokens, trying to get uh, different sets of nuts and fruit or whatever mushrooms, or maybe you're trying to get food. You're trying to find the cave. You're building settlements. You just have a lot of goals. Yes. And you don't necessarily have to meet all of those goals. Right. Um, but there's just a lot with each turn that you take and each tile that you flip over. It kind of changes what your goal is right. at that time. Yeah. It's not a point salad game, but it does have a bit of a, a point salad feel to it because you're getting points from several different areas. And most of those points aren't coming until the very end of the game. So you do have this point track that's going around the board, but that's not giving you all of your points throughout the course of the game. It's only 
kind of giving you just a few points here yeah, and there. Yeah. And most of the points happen. Yeah, I really was at the beginning wondering why do we have so many <laughs> spots here? We're on like three and four. We're and halfway the game's done. almost over. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, with this game, the interesting thing for it for me is it has all these different ways to score points and the different, uh, different sets that you're trying to do. Um, and it works on some level. I like the idea of gaining the food but not being able to do anything with it till you get to a fire and that, that turns into food that you're going to be using to uh, build things and, and inventions and, and other stuff. Again, this sounds like a very complex game, but it's not. Yeah. It just... it. I don't know, there's something about it, and maybe it's the luck factor about just not knowing where anything is until you flip over a tile, yeah. and, then, and then the whole game kind of is is built upon that just flipping of the tile. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't totally feel fulfilling to me. I don't know, what is it like for you as a non-gamer? Yeah, I mean, it just, it does feel like there's something missing, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is. Um, there's a lot of yeah, there's just so much unknown, so you can't really plan your next move. You can't really plan what your yeah. end goal is. You're just kind of, and then eventually you kind of figure out, okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna build settlements. I'm gonna, you know, near the end, probably more than halfway through, mm -hmm. you start to get your groove. But it takes the entire first first third, yeah, to figure out what the heck you're doing. The second third you're kind of getting a grip on it. And then the end, you're really figuring out how you're going to get points. Yeah, I, I will agree with that. It definitely doesn't feel like, um, you know, you really have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish until you get about a third of the way into mm -hmm. it. And then you can start to see, okay, well, I know that uh, there's this uh, allotment of food over here and, and I'm going to need food to be able to do this. So I'm going to go over there and get the food, but then I got to go back to a fire and then I've got to... Which makes sense. Like the thought sure. process yeah. of it does make sense. We kept forgetting to go back to the fire. Yeah. Um, but when you think about it, or building the settlement sends you back to the fire. That's, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Really and it, it makes sense. It's just, it wasn't intuitive. Right, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely want to make sure to read the rules carefully on this one because it's not super straightforward. It's not, you know, cl clearly intuitive to tell you, you know, this is what you're going to be doing next when this happens. So, yeah, for sure. Pros and cons for Fire and Stone. What are the things that you really enjoyed with it? Um, I really enjoyed how everything looked. I mean, it's a pretty interesting looking game. Even though it looks kind of uh, more like a, oh, a heavier game. I mean, game. I can enjoy looking at a game and not enjoy playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think it, it has good components to it. And it's an interesting idea to really not know what's there and having to flip it over and change your your thought process. So the, the gameplay is interesting, even if it's a little... Um, difficult okay. um, to kind of plan what you're doing next. So, All right. But I thought, I mean, in general, it's a good, solid game. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like it's missing something. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the cons then. What were some of the cons for you? Um, I think one of the cons is just that it's so luck based. You, you know, Lance could land on the fire that I'm looking for and then I end up with another acorn that I don't need. And, <laughs> right. so, and that can happen over and over again. So it can get tiresome or frustrating for a non-gamer but even for a gamer you just don't have any say of what's going to happen next um, when it comes to the tiles that you're moving to it is and, and it and as i mentioned earlier it can kind of feel unfulfilling when things do go your way and it wasn't because you had anything to do to make it go that way it was just by luck of the draw that yeah. you flipped this over and it ended up being the third of the acorns that you needed to complete your set. Yeah. Or it was the food that I needed and I had no food and that's exactly what I needed. So that can feel a little bit unfulfilling. It also kind of makes it so that your your, your strategy is pretty short-sighted in the sense that um, my strategy only, ex it only extends up to the point of, I know I need this. I don't know where I'm going to get to get it, but I know I need it. Oh, look, it happened to be right there. Yeah. That's not really a strategy as much as it is something I understand and know 
and boom, it just happened for me by, yeah. by chance. That, that sort of, you know, it, it feels like the game doesn't al allow you to kind of expand into playing big time strategy or looking Which forward. I think it does put a gamer and a non-gamer more at an evil, uh, an equal, equal yeah. playing field because neither one of you knows what you're going to get to. True. So the gamer can't have a better strategy than the non-gamer because neither one of you know what's going to come next. True. All right, so scale of one to 10, love to hate for fire and stone. I'm gonna go first, if that's all right, for this one. Um, and Sam Sam and I have not discussed this prior to this filming. Uh, I feel like this could be the kind of game that works well with non-gamers in the sense that it is a simple, straightforward idea, and it may not work so great with gamers. I think this yeah. is the kind of game that gamers might only play with non-gamers. Not with a group of gamers. And not with a group of gamers. But I don't also see it being a game that just a bunch of non-gamers yeah. would ever play. You need to have this pair <laughs> right. yeah. to play it. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, Which makes it perfect for our channel. Like sure. That's... Yeah. Um, now that being the case, do I enjoy it strictly from a gamer's perspective? I don't know that I do. Um, I'm probably going to give this game about a 6.5, 6.6, somewhere in that range, just simply because I don't know that it has enough for me to feel like putting it out on the table and setting it up. This is not an easy game to set up either. There's tons of pieces. Yeah. So I really need to be motivated if I want to, to pull this off the shelf and play it amongst all the other games that exist in the world. But as it is, it does seem to work well with non-gamers and I can explain it and it's a fairly simple process and uh, it, it's a straightforward game. So and, I, and it may lead the way to other games. It can, yes. So it serves a purpose. It's not it's not a, a game that I would just completely trash. Yeah. Um, but as a gamer, speaking strictly from a gamer's perspective, it, it, it falls a little short for me. So yeah. where uh, do you land? I would give it, I was going to give it a 6.8. So a little bit higher. Okay. But again, I'm the non-gamer. So I do feel like it is more geared towards me. And I understand what Lance is saying. Um, you have to be motivated to play it. I don't see non-gamers getting together and playing it. <laughs> or, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't see gamer. Well, either one. I don't see either one. You need to have a gamer and a non-gamer. <laughs> it looks like it's a game for gamers. It is definitely more suited for casual uh, gamers, non-gamers, than it is gamers. However, it's not so far on that end that it would work strictly for non-gamers. It's kind of a hard, hard game to yeah. peg. So... Uh, it's an interesting game. Um, let us know your thoughts on it. It is Fire and Stone from Pegasus Spiel. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.